Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. In a surprise development, European aerospace giant Airbus has replaced Lockheed Martin as the dominant aerospace partner in the Star Lab space station. What does this mean? Well, it means that the European Space Agency is going to have a new destination in low Earth orbit by 2028. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome once again to The Angry Astronaut. Got some exciting news coming at you today, but first of all, need to announce that I am going to be kicking off my North American tour in Florida on the 12th of August, so about a week and a half from now. It's going to be in Polk City, which is roughly, I'm told, halfway between Tampa and Orlando. It is the only location that I'm going to be stopping in Florida, and it is on the 12th. If you would like to pre-order your tickets, all of the uh, all of the details rather are in the description. And in addition to that, right now I'm selling them for ten dollars a piece, which includes a digital copy of my book. At the door, it's going to be fifteen dollars a piece. So pre-ordering obviously is the best way to do it, but that is entirely up to you. And there are only ninety-six seats available in the lecture hall. Um, one of the reasons that I decided to use this place is because they were so generous in their offering and providing me with a space for a lecture. Plus, it seems to be a good central location for the uh, Central Florida area. I'm hoping to see lots of you there. All right, let's move on. On to the topic at hand. Star Lab was one of my less favorite, to be honest, space station solutions that uh, had been proposed as a replacement for the ISS. NASA had funded a number of different solutions for this. My favorite has always been the Orbital Reef solution from Sierra Space and Blue Origin. Sierra Space, of course, being my favorite by far of the two partners there, but now things have changed dramatically. When I interviewed NanoRacks in Paris uh, months ago about this new space station, they hadn't really made any firm determinations on what they were going to be doing for a habitat. Even though the animations of the station seemed to suggest that they were going to be using some sort of inflatable solution, that is no longer the case. They now have a new and powerful partner, and that is Airbus, whereas their other aerospace partner, Lockheed Martin, well, they're out. Now, officially, this enterprise is still an American-led coalition. However, you need to keep in mind that the biggest partner by far, as far as deep pockets are concerned, as far as their contribution to the station is concerned, given the enormous size of this module that you're going to be seeing here shortly, well, Airbus is by far the dominant partner. And most importantly, European astronauts are no longer going to be dependent on NASA on space available, on their schedule, on transportation. All of these things can now be handled by Europe exclusively. So in many ways, this is Europe's first space station, and it's going to be in operation by 2028. So this may be the next destination for European astronauts in the future. This is something that has always aggravated me in the past. The fact that so few Europeans have gotten the opportunity to go to space either on the space shuttle or on the ISS. A mere handful. But now things are going to change dramatically. Now a young kid in Italy or Britain, France, Germany, any place in Europe can dream of having an opportunity of going to a permanent space station, a science park in space. And previously, I really didn't think that Star Lab had a great deal of potential because it didn't seem all that big. And furthermore, it didn't seem all that mature either. They still hadn't made a lot of extremely important decisions about propulsion, habitat, etc. Lockheed Martin, I was confident, would be able to solve a lot of these problems, but also I felt that it was going to take a very long time certainly longer than 2028. But what I didn't know is that Voyager Space, NanoRax, Hilton, and the other partners were getting together with an aerospace company that had a very clear idea of what they wanted to do in orbit, and that is Airbus. 
This is the Airbus Loop, a customizable space station module that's 8 meters in diameter and 8 meters high as well. And as you can see, it has three different isolated decks. And by isolated, I mean that they are sealed off from one another in case a micrometeoroid breaches one of the decks. On top of that, each deck is capable of operating independently as its own space station and is even capable of rotating like a centrifuge. This is an amazing breakthrough. What this means is the lower third of the station can rotate roughly six times per minute, providing one third gravity, roughly the equivalent of Martian gravity, while the rest of the station remains in microgravity, taking advantage of all of the things that you can do in microgravity. For example, manufacturing new types of metallic alloys, new types of pharmaceuticals, and 3D printed organs, all of which are very difficult to do in full gravity, where 3D printing for biological material tends to puddle up at the bottom of a petri dish. On this particular space station, you get the best of both worlds. You get your habitation on the top deck, the science deck, which is going to be able to handle biology, plant habitation, physics, materials manufacture, or any open workbench opportunity that a customer would like to pursue. And on top of that, it's all connected by a central tunnel, which also holds a greenhouse, providing fresh oxygen and also some produce for the facility. Obviously not enough oxygen to maintain all the life support, but still, it's a novel approach. On top of that, the station obviously has its own propulsion system and also some very sizable solar panels, utilizing cutting-edge solar cell technology that will provide a lot more energy than the old-fashioned solar panels utilized by the ISS. And keep in mind, the propulsion, the solar panels, all of that are very similar to the types of systems that are used on the European service module, which is also manufactured by Airbus. Indeed, the European service module is probably the most successful part of the SLS, given the fact that it's come in on time and at the projected budget. Pretty impressive, really, compared to the rest of the components on that rocket. But nevertheless, Airbus has the deep pockets and the aerospace expertise to manufacture pretty much this entire space station. Obviously, companies like Voyager Space and NanoRacks have the technology and the expertise also to make sure that this is a successful collaboration. But Airbus also has another unique service called the Bartolomeo module that currently operates on the ISS. Now, one of the biggest problems that payloads on the ISS have experienced, at least as far as independent customers are concerned, is that the astronauts are so ridiculously overworked. If astronauts need to handle the package, regardless of what kind of microgravity experiment or some other application that it might be, then it's going to be years before they can get to it. However, the Bartolomeo delivers an entire suite of experiments, or rather space for experiments, with ever, uh, every ISS resupply mission, and then these payloads are transferred to the exterior of the space station with the Canadarm, which means the only involvement that astronauts need to have is to transfer the Bartolomeo module to the exterior of the ISS, utilizing the Canadarm, and then they're done until the experiment is done and needs to be transferred back to a logistics module, probably the SpaceX Dragon, and then at that point, that's all the astronauts need to do. Two operations of the Canadarm, and they're done. Everything else is handled automatically. Now, given that this module has an 8-meter diameter, Starship is the only thing that's going to be able to deploy it. So Airbus and Voyager Space, for that matter, have a great deal of confidence in SpaceX and Starship. And as far as transferring astronauts up to the station, they'll probably end up using Crew Dragon unless they decide to use the crewed version of the Sierra Space Dream Chaser. That's very possible because the Dream Chaser can be fully 
vertically integrated with the Ariane 6 rocket, and given the fact that Dream Chaser will be human rated by 2026, or at least that's what's projected, it means that Europe could also buy one of those Dream Chasers from Sierra Space and integrate it into the fairing of an Ariane 6 and take control of an entire comprehensive manned space program complete with a destination in low Earth orbit and a destination that can be deployed with a single launch, by the way, at least a single launch of Starship. That's right, the propulsion module, the solar panels, the habitat, all of this can be deployed in a single launch. That's one of the big advantages of the Star Lab solution. And now that they've decided to add these remarkable Airbus modules, well, they can be integrated into a larger station, each module having 400 cubic meters worth of space, which means in a mere three launches, you could have a space station larger than the ISS as far as pressurized volume is concerned. This is very promising indeed. And what I find to be the most exciting about it is the fact that we have a company like Airbus with really deep pockets and a determination to put Europe in space. Well, they are a serious game changer. And now Star Lab is a serious contender in competition for Blue Origin, Sierra Space and Orbital Reef, especially when you consider that one of the decks of every module can be dedicated to an artificial gravity environment which will be so much healthier for the astronauts who serve on this station. That alone presents an amazing advantage over every other space station solution. And this company is here to compete, and I'm looking forward to what they have coming out next. Please smash that like, hit that subscribe, don't forget my Orlando tour dates, and as always, stay angry about space. <laughs>